Hi Keyshooter! In this video I am going to show you how you can use the HDRI editor inside Keyshot to create a contrasty studio lighting like you see here on this screen. Before going any further, I just want to mention that this is a 3D model that I did in Moto based on a design illustration by a cool guy named Esprian Mailvang. So make sure to check him out at his Instagram channel Mailvang.design, link in description below. Here see the model lit by the uh, basic startup HDR that loads when you open up a new Keyshot scene. And to start creating your own HDR, HDRI, you have to click this HDRI editor button here in the environment tab in the project menu. And you have to have a Keyshot Pro to get access to this feature. So hit the button and it opens up. I rearranged the window so we can see uh, both the real-time view uh, at the same time as this HDRI preview. And to start off from scratch with a, uh, a new HDRI environment, um, go to a file and say new HDRI. If you are on PC, the menu should be down here. Then you get a few options. You can change the uh, the background color and you can change the resolution. For this dark environment, we go with the background color of complete black and the resolution we set to four times 2K. Um, the bigger the, uh, the resolution, the bigger the file size. But uh, if you choose a too small resolution, you might experience blurry reflections if you have any complete shiny uh, surfaces. But in my experience, 4 times 2 k works uh, good in most cases. Uh, with that selected, hit Create, and you get a new black environment. Here we have this uh, menu where we can add pins, which are like lighting, light sources for the scene. So hit the plus sign and say Add Pin which create a, creates a circular um, light source. And what you can do here is uh, take this pin and drag it around and you can see in real time how it affects the lighting of the scene. And when you have a pin created, you get some options that you can uh, adjust. First of all, you can choose between a circular and a rectangular um, pin and you can uh, adjust its size. And when you have chosen a rectangular, you can change the X and Y dimensions of this pin individually. Then you can uh, angle the source and you can change the color, adjust the brightness, and you can always uh, type in a bigger number if the slider runs out. So type five and it recenters and you can adjust further from here. Then there are some blend modes, some fall off modes and um, this uh, azimuth and polar is just the uh, coordinates on the this spherical environment. Um, so adjusting these is basically the same as dragging this around here. As you see, uh, they react accordingly. So that's what you have to uh, to play around with. But uh, let's look at this uh, specific case. One way to position a pin is to uh, drag it in here, but you can also choose set highlight over here. Um, and with that activated, you can in your scene, left click on your model where you want the uh, highlight to appear. So here you're basically painting with light on your model, which I think is pretty cool. For this scene, I, uh, I want to have like a rim light, which is like uh, this sprite outline of the of the product. Um, I can get it uh, completely around the back by this uh, set highlight option. So I put it here uh, on the back and hit done. And then I use the uh, azimuth slider to put it in 
the final position. Um, might want to make it a big a bit bigger and also adjust the brightness like so and uh, to add a new pin i can go to add pin or if i like uh, or if i want to reuse some settings from the uh, pin i already have created i can right click and say uh, duplicate with the new pin selected i can hit the set highlight button again and again click on my model where I want a highlight to appear. And I want it to, to sit around here. So when I'm satisfied, I hit OK. And I go down to the brightness, make it quite brighter, not that much, maybe 12. And then I am going to change the fall off mode to from edge to exponential. And you'll see when um, increasing this fall off slider, we get um, a look more like a real softbox. So it's it's just some small detail to make it a bit more realistic looking. And you might have to uh, adjust brightness if you do that as well. I think I might want to do it a bit bigger, create it a bit bigger. And when doing so, you might have to turn down the brightness again. So it's a back and forth thing with all these parameters, depending on the look that you are going for. All right. So something that I like to do a lot is to go here into the color and add like a subtle color to, uh, to the pins. It helps, uh, to make things look a bit more interesting and a bit more realistic in some cases. At least it, uh, I think it adds a level of interest to the final rendering. When you're done with your lighting setup, remember to save it out. So I go to file and hit save as. And in this case, I just put it on the desktop. I call it walkie new studio something and hit save and there you have it a custom created studio environment for this specific model an important thing to mention is that if you uh, go ahead and use this uh, HDR that you created in another project and you make some changes to it it's important not to save it as the same environment but to save it as a new one otherwise when you open up your old project with this uh, lighting setup that will be changed as well so make sure that every time you make a new HDRI for a specific project save it out as a new one then you make sure that you don't mess up anything that's it for this time thanks for watching and take care